thrilling finish in the second semifinal here on Wednesday. Tied at 68, Minnesota State. The inbounds play in the final seconds. Emily Herzberg able to score it to get past a gritty bunch from Cal State San Marcos to advance to the final. Can't wait to see how this one plays out, hoping for as good as a finish as that one from the other night here in Missouri. A look at the starting lineups. Jada Seltzer pumped in 14 for the Pioneers in the semifinal win. And for the Mavericks, you saw that game-winning bucket from Emily Herzberg. She had 13.7 rebounds in the victory for the Mavs. Now there's a look at Emily TC, 12th season as head coach, 6-20 win seasons and five NCAA trips under her guidance for the group from Mankato, Minnesota out of the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. And Beth Jilson, 17th year, leading the Texas Women's Pioneers from Denton, Texas, there in the greater Dallas area. Again, the champs out of the Lone Star Conference, 34 wins, a 35th would lead to a first ever national title in program history. Minnesota State took the crown in 2009, hoping to do so again 15 years later. We're underway here in St. Joseph. Mavericks in the purple on offense against the Pioneers in the gray. There's Joey Bat, senior from New Ulm, Minnesota. All America for this group. And Lee, as you touched on, the X factor in this game wasn't involved in the first meeting when these teams met at an early season tournament in Billings, Montana. Jumper there from bat offline. Ingram can't get it. Looking for a key rebound early. Pulled out of there by Bramer. Second chance opportunity here early on. Opportunity from long range. That won't fall another offensive board. I think it, the most important thing too, Jason, here early on for both teams is kind of uh, manage their the electricity running through their bodies right now. It's been a long day. You got the electricity of the crowd. You want to play in favor of that as well. Back on the tape. Twisting there off the side of the rim. And Caroline glued Rasmussen, junior from Denmark, able to get the board here for the Pioneers. There's that defense that Minnesota State will deploy. Kind of trapping all over the floor. Not necessarily a press, but they put you in bad positions and generate a flurry of turnovers. And there's the counter. Ashley Ingram, the All-America performer from Bridgeburg, Texas, for the Pioneers. And, and the big thing for the Pioneers here, they've got to match up quickly because the Mavs want to run. They don't want to get into a half-court game. Turn on the inside there for Ava Steer, unsuccessful. Again, Steer in the starting lineup because Emily Russo is out, hurt her knee in the semi-final victory and is unavailable tonight as you look at Ingram go to work. Yeah, Ingram goes to work and she, you know, she, she backs you down. She kind of feels for your body, but she knows exactly where she's going down on the block. You've got to beat her to the spot. If you don't beat her to the spot, she's going to beat you on the entry pass in. And the fans from Minnesota State standing till their squad makes a basket. Back, trying to be the one. It is. Averages over 16 per game. The feisty leader of this group, the Central Region MVP and first team All America. Seltzer kicks it around. The attack on the baseline there from Layla Patel won't go and Steer pulls in the board. Destiny Bird, she's been hobbled too. See the big brace on her leg. Got an injury in the quarterfinal win and still battling on. Her turn pops out. Offensive rebound there. Strong for Herzberg and a foul. Joey Bat had just a little bit of a thread to work with in the paint. Watch what happens when she goes inside. Somehow manages to get through that double team out of the pocket. Count it, baby. Let's count it two right now. So Herzberg headed to the free throw line. Saw her. Finish off the game winner, and Leah, you talked about it. That said they practice that play every day of practice, and it looked like it. It was executed to perfection. It doesn't matter the sport. 
I think, you know, you have to run through your fundamentals every, you know, baseball, softball, you're running through your bunts, you're running through your pop-ups. Basketball, you're running through your sets, your full court pressure. It might get nauseating at times during the season. It's a long season, but you saw the other night the way that paid off. Emily's going to take a little bit of a break. Mavericks will shuttle in personnel in and out. Herzberg out. Mackenzie Schwein in. That foul on Ashley Ingram. Again, track that. And playing against Minnesota, you're going to see a lot of contact as they work through the track. But one benefit for the Pioneers, Lee, they've dealt with this. Yes. They've seen it in the earlier season meeting yeah. as that runner pops out. And, and I think, you know, that's funny you say that because you can see the trap four different ways in four different games, but it's not going to take them five to ten minutes to settle in on how to, how to handle the trap. Mackenzie Schwein delivering. Man, she's had a pair of threes in each of the games this week. A critical piece off the bench. And she hits another one here in the final. And the attack underneath for Avery Kleinhans and a foul on Minnesota State. And the sophomore for Mankato, you know what? You kind of trail down the court. You kind of quietly get in your spot. And all you had, she, her hands were ready, right? Her hands were there. Joey gave her a perfect pass. One fluid motion up for that three. And one factor to keep in mind here, Leah, yeah. this TWU team has been lethal from the free throw line. 16 of 16 from the strike in their quarterfinal win. And 20 of 21 in the semifinals. Yeah. Again, they have been getting there and making the most of it. And it doesn't start in March. It starts by yourself in July in the heat. Working on your game just like that. How about that from distance? Bramer, who was electric with her 29.9 rebound outing in the semis, able to come up with the big shot. And Minnesota State with an early seven-point cushion. Yeah, not afraid. Already popped in three threes here early on. And a little kiss off the glass on that one. And the subs coming in, Birch returning, Bat as well. See Bramer and Steer getting a breather. Two of five from distance here early on for Emily TC squad. You, you talked about Birch in that knee brace, number 14 in purple for the Mavs. Watching her in practices this week, she understands her range when she shoots. She understands where she needs to be on the floor for mid-range mid shots with that bulky brace on. Ingram denied on the way to the bucket. Back, trying to lead it up the floor. Schwein again looking for another three. Too strong. Back trying to tap it free. Collected though by Texas Women's University. And TWU built early leads in both of their games here this week and trying to battle back. That person has been so critical early on. Scout Huffman's been phenomenal in the opening quarters of games. And Ashley Ingram telling us that she gets just as much of a kick out of giving the assist as she does making the basket. Joey back with a big clap for herself after knocking down the three. She had a tough shooting night in the semifinal. But making amends here so far in this game. And another big outside shot for the Mavericks and a foul underneath inside. Texas women's doing a good job breaking the press, Jason, because they're not really dribbling the basketball much. They're constantly looking up with the vision and the pass. Nice kick out to the weak side. Bat all alone and draining it down. Fourth three now, 43% early on this game from behind the strike. So an eight-point lead here early for the Mavericks. Pioneers will go to the bench. Ariana Hines coming in to, spade, or to spell Jada Seltzer. Entry back for Ingram. And she leads this team in so many categories, turned over. Mavericks pry it free and get the run out. Again, this team averages 17 steals per game. They average 28 forced turnovers a game. They force over 1,000 turnovers on the season. The numbers, Leah, are ridiculous. Well, and, and I think, you know, the big thing for them is not only are they getting it done offensively, but they, they make it look so, it's crazy. It's crazy havoc. But it almost is like they do it with so much ease. A versatile player. They're not necessarily recruiting a true four, a true three, a true five. 
They're looking for that versatile player that can help them run this defense and offense. Ingram trying to turn on the inside and at the other end, Minnesota State getting everything they want offensively and a timeout taken by the Pioneers. Birch may not be 100%, but maxing out the effort, able to get it on the blow-by and the layup. Joey Batten company in charge early here in the D2 National Final. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Daisy. Creamy, pure, and natural cottage cheese. Only Daisy cottage cheese will do. And by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. A look at some of the recent national champions here in Division II women's basketball, including Ashland of Ohio. And right now, Minnesota State shooting the lights out here. I believe they missed their first four shots of the Mavericks. They've made six of nine since. Yeah, they average five in a game. And what is happening is Pioneers are playing off of them a little bit. Anticipated, Jason, that drive into the hoop. And it's opening up two or three or four feet for them to take that nice looking clean shot. Again, TWU been pretty dominant in its first two victories here this week. Their largest deficit before tonight was five points. The first five points of the week here. They fell down 5 nothing to Damon of New York and then ended up leading 29-12 at the end of the quarter. And they've rolled since. But now here, 12 down. We'll see how Beth Jilson's team responds to this. High pass. Patel fortunate to come up with it. NCW just two of seven so far. Only two turnovers to this point. Just haven't been able to put the ball in the hoop. Vettel coughs it up again. Backside poke that the Mavericks are so good at. That can't turn it into two. And collected by Gianna Carr, who's checked in the junior out of Stillwater, Minnesota. You can't dribble through through them when you're when you're running in the half court. You cannot dribble through them. You've got to look to pass first and try to break the press with the pass first. Ingram converting at the other end and leads this team to points, rebounds, assists, blocks, <laughs> free throw percentage, field goal percentage. It's certainly unselfish. She loves to set her teammates up, comes back for the rebound. And we'll see if the Pioneers can make it back-to-back -back trips with a field goal. There's the pressure broken as they work it over to the corner. Patel knocking in, hands up, deflection, and another steal for Minnesota State. Birch. Herzberg keeps it rolling near side for Steele. Got it back and scored it. Sophomore from Laconia, Minnesota, able to put it down. Timeout here, some subs coming on. As you look at the latest hoop here for this Minnesota State streaking squad. Well, and off screen, what you kind of couldn't see there, it was Bramer saying, reverse, let's, like, let's go, reverse it, get quicker. You got to be quick. They ran with that same intensity for their entire, uh, about an hour and a half today of their shoot around. Just constantly at their at game pace. Again, Leah, they sometimes don't outshoot their opponents. They've been outshot percentage wise by both of their foes coming into this game here this week. But again, they just generate so many possessions for themselves. But the numbers come in their favor. And that's a huge number three there for 21. Avery Kleinens knocking it down from deep. First three of the game for the Pioneers. Kramer, who can score any which way you want, able to work her way in there and get to the free throw line. You hear a little moan from the crowd. She got away with a little elbow there. Let's go back down the opposite end of the floor. When you climb in, there's plenty of time to look down, make sure her feet were behind the, the line there, and draining a much needed basket for the Pioneers. And the foul on Klein Hands. That sends Raymer to the foul line. <laughs> Went over the 1,000-point mark for her 
career in the last game. And look at the numbers she's generated so far here in the postseason. And, and it's, uh, tell you what, it's amazing the way that the Mavs, again, have picked it up through the run here in the postseason from the free throw line. And, you know, they've got three players that are solid from like 74% up from the line. Just don't want to set him line. Both teams have shot very well yeah. from the free throw line down the stretch. School record for made free throws for the Mavs this year as well. 21-10 for Minnesota State. The five seeds here this week against the two seeds from Texas Women's University. Baseline attack. Ingram just going to scoop it up and collect. Nice slice there by Hines to find it. Ingram now with a half dozen. Able to work around that screen. High arching shot. No. Offensive rebound collected there by Schwann. And she'll put it in from deep. How deadly is that? A second chance triple. Huffman on the baseline. Can't get the roll. Flathands working for it. Out of bounds, it'll stay with TWU. Scott had to work it back at the opposite end, the O board once again, proving to put a dagger in. That's the sixth O board for the Mavs, and they make you pay. Four of eight now are the Mavericks from three point land. Again, Delaney Lonekis coming in for Steer. We expect to see more of her again with Emily Russo, unfortunately, out with a knee injury, suffered in the semifinal win. Minnesota State basketball. Solid D. Look at the wingspan there. The help defense coming over at the right time. You can take that chance. No one down in the paint to have to guard. Help out your teammate defensively. And Emily TC said this defense kind of implemented it seven, eight years ago. She was just frustrated with the way her team was playing said, we're going to blow things up. Did they ever? And it's worked Ooh, magic for this group ever since. And how about Lonekis able to weave in for the bucket, the sophomore out of Iowa City. Fourteen point advantage. Huffman pull up off the iron. Schwein able to pull it down. Set it up on the attack. A big job rebounding too. Plus six early on for the Mavericks. Back to the paint, trying to get it back to Schwann. She'll pull the trigger again. Rebound there for Hahn. Lenek is guarding Ingram on the blow-by foul. So free throws coming here for Ashley Ingram, who, as you look at her numbers, it feels like she was destined to be a pioneer. Her late grandfather, Ken Ingram, on the board of regents at the school. Ashley used to come to the basketball camps and Beth Gilson, and she has gone to this school and made quite a name for herself. The CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. Ingram going to get a little breather here as Carr returns. Again, her at the free throw line. Deadly. She shot the most free throws in Division II this year to Ashley Ingram. Over 300. And has been so reliable in that area here in the tournament. Coming from the backside, <laughs> Klein hands trying to get the tie up instead. It'll be her second foul. Yep. Klein hands just a little bit too much hands there. Trying to smother. So 2.8 seconds left. We'll see what the Mavs have as far as a restart. 
Herzberg pulls up. Can't hit it for the baseline. Still everything else seemingly falling for Emily TC and the Minnesota State Mavericks to the delight of those that, that have made the trip about five and a half hours from Mankato. They're loving life here in Missouri. 26-13 Mavericks at the end of one quarter. The NCAA Division II Women's National Championship. Second quarter of this national final from Missouri. Minnesota State in the lead here against TWU. Tomorrow morning, 7.30 Eastern. Gear up for a Serie A clash. Defending champs Napoli go head-to-head -head against Atalanta. Catch the kickoff here on CBS Sports Network and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. Well, we know they've got the defense. They've got work on the glass, too. Mavericks are punishing the offensive end. Kind of taking a page out of the Pioneers' book right now. Those six offensive rebounds, five-second chance opportunities. This is a Maverick team that averages about 15 O boards a game, and they are just getting it done. They're getting it done right now, Jason, from the three-point line. They're getting it done from the free throw line. They're getting it done on the offensive boards. And again, we talk about, Leah, the amount of steals and turnovers they force. Uh, Those offensive rebounds are more extra possessions. Controlling the clock. Controlling the clock may not seem like a, a big thing right now, but it does when you start establishing that big lead. You can kind of take a little bit more of a breath, rotate your defense a little bit differently with your subs. It's a trickle-down effect. Just through one quarter of play. Minnesota State's already taken nine more shots from the floor than the Pioneers. That'll help the cause. Seltzer flashing in. The point guard sophomore from Martinsville, Texas, able to score close to 10 points per game. Three on the way, and that rattles out. Here's Ingram. And again, Leah, kind of not totally in the face like they've been in other foes. Again, Emily TC will kind of change it up, and a lot of it's on the players to kind of read and react about how they're doing things. As you look at the attack there from Seltzer and a foul on the Mavericks. Well, you, you, you know, you, you've got to like, you've got to lock in, and that was one of the things right there that Coach said. You've got to lock in and breaking this press, and I think. For, for, where Ashley England, the biggest thing is, she's got so much responsibility on the floor right now, Jason. You know, they expect her to score in the paint. She wants to get down on the block. They need her because of her size to handle the basketball, to break the press in the middle of the floor. Just a, a huge responsibility, huge responsibility. Seltzer able to make it. Again, these teams met in game two of the year. Phenomenal game, 12 ties, 15 lead changes. TWU won, 76-71 is another long range shot falls for the Mavericks. But Beth Jilson facing this defense said the one thing we can't do, she said jump passes. They yes. went back and looked at the turnovers, said a lot of them were players in the air making a bad decision. As you look at Birch delivering from deep. Uh, and, and again, I was watching Birch shoot arounds, practices the last couple of days, just trying to work on her shot with that real bulky brace on that right leg, and just trying to understand what her range is and get a feel on the floor where she needs to be. And now Birch foul there trying to track Ingram. Such a good passer too. Is Destiny Birch on the floor. Side out of bounds here for the Pioneers. And there's another steal. Kramer with the read, rocketing in for another deuce. Five turnovers, and they've cashed in for a pile of points, eight of them off of turnovers, and another giveaway there for the Pioneers. So frustrating for the Pioneers, and look at the anticipation. Again, we talked about this in the uh, San Marcos game. You've got a ball fake, right? You, you just can't throw the dart. You've got to fake the dart. Go high, go low, a little bounce pass. They're so smart, their court vision and their awareness, their, their eyes are wide open, 180 degrees. Nice cut there by Bramer. Super feed from Birch. Out of bounds here, it'll be off the Mavericks. Pioneer basketball. 
And the field goals and turnovers, Lee, when those numbers are close, that's never good. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Assists to field goals made, always a nice thing. Again, they've got five assists on those six field goals, and this team shares it very well. But Herzberg picks up her second. Again, the one thing they can get the Pioneers back in this game, we mentioned excellent free throw shooting yep. team, and with all this pressure, depending on how the game is whistled, yep. you could get a lot of trips to the free throw line. Well, and, and they get into your head a little bit, right, Jason? They, they get you, you're so concerned about breaking the press, you forget sometimes about the things you need to do to do good. And, you know, picking up your dribble early, traveling violation card, go to the basket, go to the basket hard. Don't settle for that short jumper. Yeah, just, just trying to establish a feet, little dancing too much. Yep. A little hesitation mm -hmm. leads to turnover seven, and the Mavs flawless with the basketball thus far. Herzberg back for Bramer on the run. Offensive rebound again. Steer has been excellent in that capacity. Bramer saw high hands going for the steal. And it falls for Bramer. She's one of those players who's got that shooting touch. Understands where the rim is. You know, the players have had all week now to get familiar with these rims. And that was the biggest thing, getting familiar with the lighting and the rims. It's been a long week here. No question the Mavs understand now just how bouncy these rims are and where they need to have that touch around the basket. That's a great shot from above. I love that shot from above. Yeah. You really see where the players are going, trying to box out early. Raymer coming off that 29 point outing in the semis, already in double figures with 11. And how about that? The restart out of bounds. Huffman able to catch and put it home. And she has been excellent in this tournament. Again with 20 plus in the quarterfinal and 18 more in the semifinal victory for TWU. Yeah, Scout's been awesome, especially in the postseason. She's 20 double figure games on the year, but four of her last five in this run in double figures. She'll get a much deserved rest. Huffman's got four early. Ingram guiding the way with seven. Kersberg on the baseline, a little short. His body's hit the deck. That's Seltzer over there. They'll get Kleinens, though, for the foul. And I believe that's her third. So that means Huffman is right back up in a hurry. And check it. And it is number three on Kleinhans. So you saw her take a seat. Herzberg at the line. And Kleinhans an important piece for the Pioneers. So you Five points, five assists, two steals in the quarterfinals, five more, four rebounds, and a couple of assists in the semis. A do-everything player. Absolutely. A, a player that averages about 22 minutes, and now you've got to manage those 22 minutes in this high-octane defensive presence of an opponent. Seltzer, and the foul there. If that's on Herzberg, let's see, that would be her third. Let's, let's check it. That's just the second on Herzberg. Pardon me. And there you see Grace Miller coming on the floor. Sunday night, 8 Eastern. Don't miss a Bucky Bull showdown as the best riders around the globe hit the dirt in Napa, Idaho. Catch PBR Unleash the Beast here on CBS Sports Network. Finding a way through, goes to the left hand. Rebound collected by Ingram. And the quick outlet there for Selzer. No trouble setting it up offensively. But the job's not done. Three on the way. Rattles off offensive rebound Selzer. Hines will try it from deep. Can't hit. Huffman keeps the possession going. Slow it down. They're rushing a little bit, Jason. Ingram. Got it back. Can't get it in, and 
and Steer able to clear it. Already five rebounds for Ava Steer. And now Hines going to get called for the reach-in foul. Mavs speed you up in a, in a number of ways. They, they, they get into your head again. They are dictating the tempo of everything right now. Offensive rebounds getting reset again, trying to get that steal, come away from that steal, getting that bucket the opposite way. Back on the attack, short. Huffman blowing up that attempt. And now Seltzer trying to direct some traffic. And look at all the angles taken by those Maverick defenders. Just trying to figure out how to go. And thrown away by Celsa. Again, it's interesting watching Minnesota State kind of do their thing, Leah. Mm -hmm. They're talking about where's the ball, where is the pressure, and what is the opposition looking for to kind of key in on what they're going to do. And, and their communication is key. They are talking so loud right now. See the points off of the turnovers, 10 points off of the turnovers. But they, they're talking, constant communication with each other on the floor. Kramer rattles home another three. Sixth of the half for Minnesota State. And the, plenty of the second quarter to go. They have doubled what they normally average in a game right now. And we got a long way to go. And another possession earned for Minnesota State. Well, uh, the Mavericks get a lot of possessions and they're getting a lot of points so far. 37-21 Minnesota State here in the Division II Women's National Championship. If you're a Mavericks fan, it's been your personal week of March Madness. The men's and women's team both making the Elite Eight and both keep on winning. The men won again yesterday, beating Lex Texas A&M. They play for the national title tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern here on CBS, Sports, or on CBS against Nova Southeastern. And that means for some people, Leah, it's been a busy week of travel. That includes the president of Minnesota State, Edward Inch, Sheen Athletic Director Kevin Feisman. Let's see, it's seven hours yep. from St. Joseph to Evansville. Tank trips. Tank trips. Tank, tank of gas trips. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> they're probably about 30 hours in the car this week Easily. so far. And Easily. they got more to go because <laughs> they got another game tomorrow. You better like your travel buddy doing that. But when it's all about basketball this time of year, and what a game that'll be tomorrow in the men's Nova Southeastern they're averaging 100 points a game that's going to be a run fest of both teams nearly both of their starting lineups are almost in double figures that's going to be a great game to watch as well yeah one of the things to entertain I think both of these teams throughout the week is being able to watch the other yeah. on their days yeah. off as they come through Minnesota State turns it over for the first time and now on the baseline Foul coming on the Mavs. What a fun time around campus too, right? Just everybody engaging in this in this great time of the year in March. Layla Patel at the free throw line. I also, also like watching today too is TWU is at the line. Dallas Wings reached out to them, wishing them good luck. North Texas reached out to them, wishing them luck. And of course, the team that they bonded, their school that they bonded with here, the Buchanan also reaching out to them today. So it's awesome just the way that everyone, everyone has braced, embraced both of these squads. And Bramer is just such a bucket, yep. able to turn, rise, and score. How about 16 now already here in the first half? Kick out, Huffman had it blocked. That's Bramer active there too. And another foul in the aftermath on TWU. Well, in the semifinal victory against San Marcos, Bramer was one of the keys early on in the game. I thought she established herself nicely in the semifinal victory against San Marcos and doing it here as well tonight. A little bit of defense and then he's a little block. Clamping it down with the three, drive him to the hoop. Just a really multi-dimensional player. That whips it near side for Birch. 
She'll pull up. Rebound there for Ingram. It's her sixth board of the opening half. And Ashley skilled enough to bring it across the timeline herself. Turnover. What a read from Bramer. Can't finish. Burst back. And big collision there with Selzer. And Selzer picks up her first. Two players going hard after the ball. Good to see both of them get up quickly. She's already got the knee brace yeah. on, does this, this Birch. It's good It's yeah. good that the uniform is already purple because that may be the color <laughs> that black, she is purple. after this week. Yeah. She's a tough cookie. Steer, backed out by Inga. On the baseline, another Oops. foul coming. And free throw is ahead. Trying to deny that baseline move, got a little handsy. Gianna Carr with the foul. And there's Destiny Birch. And continuing to power through. Again, it was fun. Both teams today kind of feeling it. You get to practice on the last day of the season. You maxed out your year. Just pretty kinda, cool. Just kinda, and both of them were smiling pretty cool. They, they were like, you know, it, when you think about it, it's cool. And I, I'm glad they had the day off in between to really just kind of soak in what happened the other night. Both teams were physically and mentally exhausted. And just to have that one day to be able to enjoy it before focusing in on this one. Minnesota State coming out on fire, and it's continued here with the lead of 18. Ingram doing what she does, just attack the rim to get it home. Nine points now for the Pioneer All-America. Pull up Steer. And Ingram, another board. Back, trying to take it away. Raymer comes up with it. 11th turnover of the half. Steer, another O board and stick back. It is a full-on Maverick assault now at both ends of the floor. How about Seltzer? Crafty and one. And this is a saucy little move. Yeah, she, well, she was really upset with herself the last time down the floor at the opposite end. And working hard here just trying to make something happen for her team right now. Jada Seltzer, one of three pioneers to scoring double figures in the semis. And she had a big game in the win against the Mavericks in November. 12 points, eight rebounds, three assists. So Seltzer checks out after getting some work done, trying to help whittle down this Maverick lead a little more before we get to halftime. Anna Herzig, entry pass. Bank shot is there for Steer. She's got four points along with a half dozen boards. Ingram, short, rebound, Herzig. Excuse me, Herzberg. Turn around. That won't fall. Rebound to Ingram. And Leah, what we're talking about in this game, again, all the turnovers and possessions for Minnesota State as Huffman gets fouled. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Adam Zucker, Wally Zerbiak will be in the New York studio. They'll get you caught up all around college basketball. Also have first half highlights and stats from this game all ahead on AT&T at the half. Everybody's going to need a little breath come halftime the way the pace is. 
45 points right now, right? This is a team that averages 80. They have TWU exactly where they want them right now as far as opponents scoring. They keep them under 60, they're in good shape. Again, it's amazing how this works. They're shooting essentially the same percent, 40% from the floor. The Minnesota State's got now 17 more shot attempts here in these opening two quarters, and they are ready to keep rolling on. Look at that. Just the numbers that they're able to generate, and it continues. Even that time, turnover, a rare one in this opening half <laughs> for the Mavericks. Well, and, and, and that's where the Mavs, quote unquote, need to just settle down a little bit. The high octane speed just getting a little bit too much ahead of them, under a minute to go. Ingram trying to find Huffman. Those two work well together. They find Ingram underneath. Another nice assist there from Hines, her second helper of the game. Keep in mind, she's only a junior. She's got so much more game ahead of her, and she's already in the all-time category in four different spots for the Pioneers. Yeah, school record for points and rebounds in a single season this year for Ashley Ingram. Man, if they could get a stop here and potentially another score before the end of the half, that would be massive. Flipped in front. Turns short. And the rebound off the foot of Ingram and the Pioneers. 8.7 ticks left to go before the break. Herzig to inbound. Steer hustling back to get it. Herzig into the paint. Fouled with 1.6 seconds left to go before the break. And for Ingram, that'll be her second. Herzig had a huge outing against TWU in the win when they played each other in Billings in November. 16 points, team high, five steals for Emily TC. You say that, five steals. Again, five players on Minnesota State average two or more steals per game. They are relentless on the defensive end, and it's led to great success this year overall, and especially when having the lead at halftime. And right now, the lead here in this national championship game is 14 for the pride of Mankato, Minnesota. The Minnesota State Mavericks getting things done here so far in Missouri with the lead on Texas Women's University. AT&T at the half, stick around. It's coming up next. Again, it's not too often, Leah, that you see a team getting outshot percentage-wise that's leading by double digits, but that's what Minnesota State does, again, just scooping so many extra possessions. Right, and, and you, you said it during the halftime that this is a team that potentially could get outshot now for made, made buckets for the third consecutive game and the, the potential of winning a basketball game. That's just incredible, just because of their defensive intensity. And again, other teams maybe shoot a better percentage, but this team knows how to generate points per possession and getting opportunities to score. And there's Ingram, certainly need more for the All-America from the Pioneers, delivering there on that aggressive take right away. 11 points now for Ingram. Six of 12 from the floor, turnover Minnesota State. And the pass there from Ingram. Uh, Back turn for Huffman, and it turns into three. How about Herzberg dialing from deep from the corner? At the other end, the attack there from Patel offline. Seven triples now in the game for Minnesota State. Birch catch and shoot. Yes. Pull up for Huffman. That won't fall. Ingram, offensive rebound and put back. Ashley Ingram was asked to do so much in those first two quarters 
Jason, I, you know, the responsibility of, of breaking the press, bringing the ball in the middle of the floor. I, I think that you know, during halftime they had to have those conversations about letting Ashley get established in the block and trying to figure out a way to get the ball to her, kind of reverse it a little bit. She's having to do way too much. How about Steer knocking it, knocking it down again, getting the start today in place of the injured Emily Russo. She's got eight, another turnover, gifted right back by Minnesota State. And now, Huffman can't save it off a Maverick player, and that will bring it up the floor. And again, Beth Jilson, Leah, talked with us. She said, look, we want to get into a half-court game here with Minnesota State. They've done that, and they haven't been able to stop the Mavericks as Bramer continues the assault. Bramer, you mentioned uh, Steer, but the pace of the game has been so quick here. It hasn't been easy to get in a, a thought on Ava. She has been phenomenal on the boards and through this tournament on the boards. Kind of gets lost in the offensive prowess and the steals of this Minnesota State team, but she has been steady for them on the boards all season long. And there's Steer on the attack. And the foul coming on Seltzer. Good passing, making the and, no, and notice again, they do not put the ball on the floor unless they're going to the basket. They're making crisp passes from the outside. Texas women's is so so like drenched in and wondering if they're going to drain those threes. They're playing off of them a little bit. And Steer can't hit the free throw again. Starting in this game, Emily Russo. Went down with a knee injury in the semifinal. Tried to battle through it. Yes, she did. Helped off. And such a bummer. Can't play in this national final, but she's rooting on her team. Absolutely. Was at practice today and really involved, like another set of coaching eyes for her teammates. Ingram on the take. Can't get it to go, and she'll get to the line. And they had free throws. They usually have teams on each side. They put the ball down at the line in her honor Respect. today. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Because she couldn't come out and shoot them. Now Beth Jilson hoping to see more of these fall for her team. And again, get to the line. Get Minnesota State potentially in some foul trouble and slow down the game a little bit. That's the job for Ashley Ingram and company right now. And able to get both to fall through for Coach. Again, led the Pioneers to four NCAA berths, the only ones in program history, with the 270 wins and counting. From deep, another one falls. Hersberg drains it again. Good rotation coming from the bottom. Curling back up towards the top. Nobody caught her up at the top of the key. Little kick. Out of bounds. I believe that's going to be TWU ball. Again. Watch the move and the cutback up top on the kick. Nice and easy. Gets separation from Huffman there. Making it look easy. Just enough as soon as the defender took her eyes off. And Mavericks get so many points off of turnovers. But if the half-court offense is working like this, good luck stopping them. The lead is ballooned to 21. And again, they were. 3 of 17 from 3 in the semis. They're 8 of 15 from distance here in this game. Maybe that'll spark a little resurgence offensively with Patel hitting it. And another contact on the way to the cup. Looking to get some rhythm. Swinging that ball to the opposite side there. And a nice job. A little drive to the hoop and a little pull-up jumper by Patel to nail it. And Patel with her first made field goal of the game. And second leading score for this Pioneer group. Close to 14 per game. Foul on Gianna Carr, her second. And it's tipped there by Kleinhans, who was limited after picking up her third foul in the second quarter. And we'll see if she can become a difference maker for GWU. Grace Miller has it taken away. And as we say it, there she is, getting the steal of Kleinhans. Backside strip. Patel, wide open look. Long rebound to back. Back pull up. That's short. 
The Pines may have influenced that. And the outlet here for Hines. Missed it. Another rebound from Steer. Herzig will dribble here. Approaching the 5.30 mark, third quarter. And Minnesota State won the national title 2009. Trying to win it again here in 2024. That's out of bounds off Herzig. And Leah, sometimes in a game of this magnitude, hard to play with a lead this size sometimes. See if the Mavericks can keep the pressure on and keep the Pioneers at bay. Well, and that was one of the very few times that they actually had to play a half-court game. Turnover here going the opposite way. And an over and back call there against the Pioneers. Turnover 16. Not quite sure. Again, for TWU team, it only gives it away about 15 times per game. Have to understand you're going to commit more than your fair share against the Mavericks <laughs> in this defense. That we're told she is just a unique personality. <laughs> just ran on top of the P there. She knew it right away. Another turnover. She, she for CWU. And, yeah, and they changed it up there, right? They 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 had somebody else try to handle the ball and put Ashley Ingram down low so she could get herself on the block and unfortunately turned over the ball. Beth Jilson looking on, yeah. going, This isn't my normal group. And trying to settle down, settle in here in this national fight. Pull up. Wedgie stuck. That's the only thing keeping Minnesota State in check right now as the Mavericks are rolling. Minnesota State 59 40 advantage on Texas Women's University here in this national championship. Minnesota State's been in this position before. Take you back to 2009 against. Franklin Pierce of New Hampshire and a big outing for this group. Heather Johnson, the tournament MVP. They hoisted the hardware there in San Antonio. And again, now in their ninth NCAA appearance, back in this national title game, potentially on their way to winning it again. And how about this cool reunion for yep. some of the members of the 09 team to be in the house here. Alex Andrews, point guard Tiffany Moe, among those with some other alums on hand. What's a Mav, always a Mav, making the phone call saying, guys, we got to get there. And they sure did right behind the team bench tonight. And they got to be liking what they're seeing. Maybe wishing they could have played in this system oh, absolutely. too, although they got things done under Pam Gold, the then head coach of the match. Drive there for Herzig. And can't get it to go, but she'll have free throws coming up. And again, part of uh, Minnesota State takeover of the Division II tournaments. Again, the Minnesota State men play Nova Southeastern in the final tomorrow in Evansville, Indiana. Three o'clock Eastern on CBS right. is our promo, but Leah, only once before have both teams gotten both basketball titles in Division II in the same year. Uh, 1984, which is crazy. Central Missouri doing it. And, uh, you know, it's, again, it's, it's so hard to get here. Minnesota State is one of 11 teams that have won this illustrious trophy once. And, you know, going into unprecedented territory if both programs can cap it off tomorrow. Seltzer able to get the banker to go. There are actually three Division II universities that both their men's and women's teams made it to the Elite Eight. Tip of the cap to Ferris State from Michigan and Gannon of PA for also accomplishing that feat here this week. Steer on the inside, solid D from Gianna Carr. Trying to negotiate that purple power from the Mavericks. How about the Pioneers with some solid defense? Trying to pull out all the stops and a nice job by Herzig, understanding where she needed to get in there, keeping the body away from the body in a foul situation. Again, the 
the, the bench, the changes tonight, actually it was Carr there on the play, not Herzig, but you know, being able to keep the body off as the bench has been a little bit tighter tonight for the Pioneers and making substitution in this high octane offense well, by after, Minnesota State. After the held ball call, TWU gives it right back. Oh, now on a hard fall here for Joey Pat, who is full bore all the time. Bat already five points, five assists, and five steals. And the points off of turnovers for Emily TC usually gets a critical statistic. And it is again tonight. Schwein back for Bramer. She'll put it on the deck and go against the double team and one. That foul may have actually been off the ball. See what it is. Watch off the ball. Watch 21. See what they come with here. Yeah. Natalie Bramer can find you points. That's what the officials are discussing right now. Again, off the ball, that foul was called on. So the foul is on Klein Hensley, as you talked about. So off the ball, so it's not an and one. It's Joey Bat getting free throws in addition to that bucket. That's a dual hurt there for yeah. her Joey's, team. And Joey saying, hurry up <laughs> as her teammate. Destin just goes over and trying to get that blood off the knee. Can't have that present visible on the floor. So Klein Hansley gets yep. her fourth foul again. Yes. You can see how impactful she is when she's there for TWU. And instead of potentially being a three-point trip, this could be a four-point trip. So they're going to pull Bat here and bring in Birch. Unless they can get Bat tidied up in time here. Let's see. And they're trying to get the wrap yeah. going. They're actually going to give Bat the time, which usually if it takes time like that. Well, we've been talking about Minnesota State and some love. How about a guy that we call a colleague here in these parts, Brad Nestler. It's like Maverick there. Yeah, class of 77, worked at the student <laughs> radio station, then worked in Mankato professionally on radio before moving to Atlanta where he got into calling games at Georgia Tech and for the Atlanta Falcons and then again been such a voice for CBS over the years. He's got a lot of rooting to do this weekend along with the rest of the Mavericks voice. <laughs> no, not, not those dulcet tones, don't say it. Hope Brad and his family are enjoying this and Joey Bat certainly enjoying it and she's really got to be enjoying it Leah, because she yeah. missed the first five games of the year with a broken hand including this matchup with TWU and you can see what a difference maker she is it the leader yeah. she's got everybody yeah. laughing and smiling and just but lock back in yeah <laughs> <laughs> switching it switching it back in and if you recall it was Joey Bat who you know set the tempo early took that very first shot of the game yeah it was off but trying to set that tempo early for her team. And all you need to know about Joey Batten and what she means to this team. Again, she missed five games without her, and then her first game back. In that six-game stretch start of the year, they went two and four. Since then, they've won 29 of 30 with her at the helm. And Hines able to hit a key bucket. Pioneers can't keep trading buckets. No. It's another big shot from Natalie Bramer. How about nine triples in the game for Minnesota State? Just absolutely amazing. And again, they're giving them the line. You've got to adjust and understand. And the pace of the game is so quick, and the quickness of Minnesota State, you're being hesitant defensively of, do I step up and try to take you away from that, from that three-point shot? Or do I back off of you so I'm able to handle your steam on your drive to the hoop? And it has Ingram, been a thorn tonight. It certainly has, and Ingram been trying to collect herself. You see 
Taylor Teush getting a breather. That picks up her third foul. Entry for Patel. She'll attack. Get it. And the foul. Patel working hard, working so hard. And threading through. Started as a double team, almost became a triple team with Burst on the back side. But a big step and going strong to the basket. Beth Gilson recruited her hard yep. out of high school. She got some late Division I offers, decided to go to George Washington in D.C. Coach said, if things ever change, call me. She goes into the transfer portal and she called coach and so happy to have her come in here. Her second year with the Pioneers. Bat with a breather. Herzberg. Back for Herzig. Underneath, Schwein. Normally finishes from long range. How about the inside presence, too? Minnesota State continuing to dominate. And the lead still hanging out at about 20. Number 20 for TWU trying to put it in. Carr can't get it to go. Still hustle. Hines able to snare it. Patel pull up. That's short. Still TWU basketball. Down the opposite end of the floor. Look at this tough shot. Being patient underneath through the double team and the finish. And so far here in this third quarter, 8 of 12 shooting for Minnesota State. Pretty good shooting two for TWU. About 50%. But they can't make any serious inroads on this Maverick lead. And the throwaway there, turnover 19 of the game. Steer wide open. Got it. Patel and Ingram got caught up, and that allowed Steer to be all alone with that basketball. 11 points on 5 of 10 shooting for Ava Steer, along with eight key rebounds and another possession earned for Minnesota State. Bush was looking around, seeing if she could take it to the hoop, and actually one of the few times they were looking to kind of slow it down. Final minute here, TWU in this big deficit coming into this game. Their largest deficit of the season was 15. And right now, it's 22. What was transpiring off the ball in the corner there between Patel and Ingram, just thinking that that box out was coming from the opposite end. Made it easy on that turnaround for Steer. Rebound Ingram. Look at the purple collapsing on the All-America for TWU. And they poach away another possession. Birch kick to the corner. And Emily TC <laughs> from the bench getting her workout there, waving them way back to hold here for the final shot. But the way they're rolling here. Why not? And now, a Maverick hits the floor. It's Birch. And a foul coming on TWU. It'll be on Carr for a shove. Her third. Emily TC still coaching up this group. Third straight trip to the NCAA tournament. Again for this group out of the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference. And 
they are flying high. Birch to the free throw line. Key from Ingram. And as we head to the fourth, largest lead of the game for Minnesota State. A 24-point cushion headed to the final quarter of regulation of the national championship. Emily TC and the Mavericks of Minnesota State may be rolling towards winning it all in Missouri. Minnesota State, the Maverick fans, have been dancing pretty much all night here in St. Joseph, Missouri. Carrying this cushion to the fourth quarter, thanks in part to this overwhelming defense. Uh, just it, it's smothering, smothering defense, forcing 21 turnovers tonight. You know, and, and Jason, any team would be kind of happy to shoot 40% on the quarter, but your opponent shoots 60% on the quarter, 29 points off of turnovers tonight for the Mavericks. And again, just a amazing display of how to go about your business on a basketball court. Remily TC in Minnesota State and a quarter away from putting this one away and securing the second national title in school history and a potential National title double again with their men on standby for tomorrow in the men's D2 national title tilt in Evansville against Nova, Nova Southeastern in that game three o'clock tomorrow on CBS. Whoa! Fine hands maybe got away with a walk. But CWU just try to keep working and see what transpires. Good inside out and Seltzer drains three. Quick, 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 didn't let the shot clock get deep. Better movement of the basketball, breaking that press. Now you're gonna make a stop here at the opposite end. Just You've been giving up two, you can't go hand for hand with buckets. Just the third triple of the game for the Pioneer. Underneath, right hands, and the second chance goes for Herzig. Again, Leo Woods, been eye-opening in this game for a team that gets so much done from their defensive prowess is back, thieves another one, and lays it in. Is how well Minnesota State has executed in its half-court offense. Yeah, half-court and understanding, again, understanding where the next spot is. Now, look at Bursher coming in, back, backs off. It's like an accordion. And they know exactly how that squeeze box is gonna work. <laughs> We were joking with Coach how to describe it, like a Venus flytrap. You get close <laughs> enough, and then it shuts yeah. on you. And no, and no one when to reach in, right? It's, it's, it looks easy to reach in, but you want to reach in and be able to make sure you don't foul on the play. And that only comes with reps. And Coach will tell you, it's not a press. It is a motion defense. And we asked, do you have, like, one of those trendy phrases for it? As you see, the shot knocked out by Scout Huff. You remember VCU, the men, when they went to the Final Four? It was the Havoc D. She said, no, no, no. nothing like that. It just works. He's actually had calls from other coaches asking. She was like, "Look, you can come, but you got to understand, it's you know, it's not cut, it's not black and white." And as <laughs> she talked about, and you mentioned earlier, kind of different personnel that she's looking for. She said, "We don't always take the best players. They have to fit for what we're doing. Somebody that anticipates well, that is confident and okay with making mistakes, and is." Ingram goes up strong, fouled hard, and there you see the Pioneer star slow to get up for Beth Jilson and company. Foul on Herzberg, her third. Just working so hard in the paint, at being asked to do so much tonight, going hard down on her knees. It wasn't able to catch herself with her hands, and that hurts. Ingram at the line and a double-double for her, 20th of the season. And we have a last thought in that piece for what Emily is looking for, explosiveness. And you can see it, the quick burst for these defenders, they get to the ball in a hurry. In a hurry. Swarming. Ingram converts again from the stripe. Again, the nation's leader in Division II in free throw attempts. 
doing what she does, converting from the free throw line. 18 points at all. And now high pressure here from the Pioneers. And Emily TC took a timeout. 76-54, the Mavericks closing in on a championship. Uh, how about a second look at our Daisy Cottage G's keys to this national championship game for both teams? Well, I think for the Mavs, we talked about in the open, they had 56 attempts coming into the last, from the last two games. They just weren't able to convert. They've converted tonight much better. Converting on the turnovers from the onset, Jason, 31 points off the TOs. Rebound, rebound, rebound. TW has had problems tonight on the boards. They've been beating that to Partlet. They started to be relentless on the boards early but haven't been able to box out because they really haven't had consistent second chance opportunities throughout this game. Mavs have taken a page out of that book. Well, Pioneers able to get the theft. Ingram pushing it back in. She hits the deck hard again. Play moves to the other end and Steer able to finish effectively. Ingram already still down at this end. Kind of got up slow. Back in attack mode. Steer with a swipe, missed it. And Ingram able to get the stick back. 20 points, 12 rebounds now for Ingram. More high pressure from the Pioneers, and it pays results. A little bit slow, still moving to Jason is, is Ingram as they hobble, she hobbles back up the floor a little bit. Fell out really, really hard on that right knee, and I think it's still bothering her quite a bit in this Pioneer team. 34 wins coming in. Then won their first South Central Regional title. That'll help the cause. Trying to close the gap a little more. Seltzer delivering. Turnover. Bramer threw it away. Every flows of the game, right? You know they're going to get a punch here. Minnesota State saw Seltzer turned out of bounds. Instead, offensive rebound for Hines, who's been excellent. Three on the way, no. Hoffman, the effort certainly there, and now offensive foul as Huffman got the arm and elbow up. Up and out, unfortunately, for Hoffman. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that Bring one. Bring it right in. And now, technical foul on Beth Jilson. And that call right in front of the TWU bench. And we, we talked about it, again, the way Minnesota State plays, again, how much is called affects how things are going to work. Beth Jilson, I'm not sure she's saying she was discussing something with somebody else. And got the technical. That makes one of two at the line. And the toughest part, get possession on, yep. on top of it here. So everything you're working towards to try to cut into this margin. Taking the life out of you a little bit. And this TWU team, after a stretch of losing seasons, they had a rough year during the COVID plague year of 2021. That Joseph's group turned it around, said they learned a ton that year. And since then, 20 wins, 26 wins, and 34 wins this year. And they keep on trucking. So does Ingram. Another lay-in in deep. 22 points now for Ashley Ingram. Bramer. Underneath, blocked. Ingram with the rejection. But Herzberg got it back. Steer, she's rejected. These two teams are laying it all out here on the floor. Battling in the post at both ends of the floor. Look at Ingram just trying to get a little separation, using her body to do so. Under six left to go. 
Pioneers making strides. But is the deficit too large to overcome? Another miss for Minnesota State. And now Seltzer fouled by Herzig on the side. And trying to use the sideline as an extra defender. And another personal foul. Yeah, but he's got some fouls to give here as Lee slows things down. Ingram is you know, trying, to, trying to get her up the court a little bit. Just barely saved that one. Schwann coming back in to Minnesota State. Ingram and a foul there on Steer trying to handle the All-America 6-2 June. Trying to be sneaky with, with the hold there a little bit from that backside. Anything to slow Ingram down. Third team foul of the quarter. Oh, oh, oh. Kramer and now foul on Seltzer. Yeah, and, and I would agree on that play. I, I thought that Bramer got away with a little bit of an elbow there aggressively on the play. Watch when she comes up right there. Back. Trying to circle out of trouble. A little bit better clock management here if you're the Mavs, right? You can, you can afford to slow things down a little bit. Not rush. Actually try to do something they don't normally do, which is kind of get more into a half, half court flow, utilize the cross right now. Well, when they've had to, they've been efficient. Braber can't get that to go. Well contested by Ingram. Joey Bat bidding for her seventh steal of the game. And it gets the tie up. Possession arrow favoring the Mavericks. Minnesota State, non-stop intensity from the get-go. Right now, Minnesota State on the precipice of a title. Uh, getting their groove on here in Missouri. And we'll do the same coming up next, our 360 crew for tournament updates. We'll break down the day's action on NCAA March Madness 360. It's right here on CBS Sports Network. Well, Natalie. Bramer, Leah, she's been in rhythm right from the jump here, not only in this game, but throughout this Elite Eight week. Yeah, absolutely. And then kicking it from the outside was really the person that kind of set up the team with a three-point shot early. And then you back off of her as a defender, thinking she's going to take that three. And you know what? She nails it, driving to the basket. Just really been a complete player tonight, two for two from the line. Nice stat line for Bramer for sure. She's played almost 26 minutes. 14 for her in the quarterfinals, 29 points in the semis. And now another game over 20 with 23 here in the championship affair. 4.44 to go. Minnesota State trying to put this one away, but the Pioneers have been on the prowl. And they've been going full court at times to try to generate some more steals, and there's Bramer fouled. Again, for Emily T.C. coaching a family affair. Her dad, Tim, longtime high school coach, and there's her sister, Amy, who has done pretty well for herself She's at Nebraska. Right there. Yeah, yep. how, how about this year, too? Regular season win against yeah. Iowa, made it all the way to the Big Ten final okay. in that thriller against the Hawkeyes again, and back in the NCAA tournament for the second time in three years. Getting we, here, she got here early tonight. She got prime seat right at center court. Making and sure. We joke with Coach when we talked with her earlier this week. I said, was there any way you were not entering the family business? She goes, nope. She said she tried maybe at one point, but it's in there. Well, that family got a lot of W's next to their name. Hines, entry, turnover. That is number 27 of the game. And that is just about the average that Minnesota State generates per game. Just almost the same spot with points per game, too, right now. That was about 83. Little handoff of Herzberg missed it all. The time of wasting here 
for TWU with under four left to go. Fine hands again. Been in and out with foul issues. Returns for Hines. And a breather as well for Mackenzie Schwein, who had those critical early threes. Part of that yeah. just barrage for Minnesota State out of the blocks. Huffman turning short. Ahead for Birch. Another rebound for Ingram, her 14th. Corner look, Clyde hands. That rims out. Seltzer gets it back for Ingram. Seltzer wants three. Let's go! Timeout, TWU. Jada Seltzer with her third triple of the game. Minnesota State trying to put this one away. How about the fight from TWU? Texas Women's University started as an all-women's institution in 1901. Went co-ed in the early 70s. Still about 85% women attend. Women's basketball program since the 80s. And, and they are battling hard here. And, the good news, regardless of this result for the Pioneers, Leah, everybody's yum, back next yum, year. Yum. Useful squad. The lone senior scout, yeah. Huffman, going to be able to take her COVID year and come back. So the present has been pretty bright throughout this campaign for TWU, and the future looks pretty promising as well. Steal, Seltzer, layup, got it. And how great is that? Now you've got to come back if you're the Pioneers and set up quickly, match up quickly, a little full court pressure, see if you can't turn the ball over again. Kramer trying to pull out of it, and Emily TC able to utilize another timeout. We'll step aside as well, back here in 30 seconds. This is starting to look like the group that Beth Gilson has had at her disposal all year with some gritty plays and some big time shooting makes. Big time shooting makes, and the nice thing is they're kind of taking a page out of the Mavs books right now with the turnovers in the hoop. Anytime they touch the basketball, they've got to get to the hoop quickly. 10 second violation. Another chance for them here in the front court. There's still belief for the group from Denton, Texas. Hoffman comes back. Carr. And again, TWU has been in front just about the entire time this week. Minnesota State's been the squad that's had to rally from deficits in fourth quarters here this week. And now off the inbounds, and one for Kleinhands. Fight the fight. You said finally winning a quarter here. Look at this attack of the basket. Quickly, quickly going to the hoop. And the opportunity now for the three-point play. Foul on Bramer. Kleinhands makes the free throw. It's a 12-point game, certainly doable with 2.35 left. Bat speeding down the floor. She'll back it out. Maverick's going to work some clock and put it in the hands of their All-American. Little well, five out, maybe try to, I was going to say, try to take a dive to the basket, but that's a dangerous shot right there. You get that three that bounces deep. Ingram freight draining down the floor. Another hard hit for the leader of the Pioneers. Couple of free throws coming up. That was dangerous from the opposite end, right? Still plenty of time at the shot clock for Joey Bat, the opposite end of the floor. Took that long three. When you have a long three and a miss, it opens up the opportunity off the rebound at the opposite end. Foul on Herzig, her fourth. And Ingram at the free throw line. Been an excellent free throw shooter, especially for a player that draws as much contact as she does. <laughs> what a weapon. When she was 12 of 12 in the line in the quarter five. And how about this? It's a 10-point game. And a block 
called on Klein hands, and that'll do it for her. Trying so hard to generate another steal. Avery Klein hands will foul out here. Ariana Hines returning for her. Seven points for the sophomore. And now another sophomore, Hannah Herzig from Lino Lakes, Minnesota at the free throw line. Get this far, you're gonna realize it might not go your way in this big moment. Still hope here for TWU. Patel, short, rebound, Herzig, back with a lead feed, thrown away. You would think, Leah, that Minnesota State would be pretty good on dealing with pressure defenses since they see it all <laughs> see the time. time in practice. But the Pioneers have been problematic here. Another turnover, though, on the Pioneers. Gets it back to the Mavericks. 1.21 left and another timeout for Emily TC and Minnesota State, who's just trying to keep her group calm down the stretch. Texas Women's University and Leah, they have exploded for 23 points so far in the first, their highest scoring quarter of the game. Absolutely, and you talk about winning the quarters, right, and fighting back, and they have done a super, super job diving to the basket. Their inbound planes all week, I thought they had run efficient. They've had success with them. And certainly at this moment, in this juncture of the game, they need that last little run, 17-5 over the last six minutes. And no field goals for Minnesota State here in the last 6.08. And they are 3 of 14 since late in the third quarter, about a minute left. And that's when the Pioneers have made big time strides on the Maverick advantage. Foul quick on the inbounds. Got to get out. You got to follow the give. Hines going over the corner, Herzberg trying to dribble through it, and there is the reach in foul and a near steal for Ariana Hines. Well, for Minnesota State, if they can make this lead stand up, they would join this cluster of institutions that have won multiple Women's Division II national championships. And some of those have come in recent time with the runs from Ashland, Ashland. Yep. Love Christian. And the 2009 group, some of those alums in the house. Trying to see if this unit can get it done 15 years later. Tie up. And the arrow favors TWU. Jilson still with some belief for this group. They have hustled hard to put some pressure on the Mavericks in this four. Patel launching. Can't land three. Huffman offensive rebound. And lost it. Frustrating night here for TWU. And a foul in the backcourt. And the Maverick backers getting ready to potentially celebrate a national title. And Leah, potentially, Minnesota State could celebrate two in less than 24 That's hours. Crazy. That's crazy, and the fact that on the verge here, of revenging yet their fourth team in this run this 
toward the latter part of the season of teams that they had played this year. Uh, some of the alums from 2009 and other years rooting on the current crop of Mavericks because they are close to the finish line here. 86-71 with 54.1 left. And Joey Bat missed the first meeting between these teams. You see what a difference she can make. Absolutely. Again, we talked about her in the open. The electricity that Joey Bat provides. Fourth in the nation in steals. Six assists tonight as well with those 10 points. And the catalyst on this squad leading the way, the floor leader of the team. Yeah, how about her? 10 points, six helpers, and seven steals. Again, for a team that's generated, Leah, 20 steals tonight. But this is not uncommon. No. Again, they average 17 steals per game. They force 28 turnovers per game, second most in Division II. Glenville State, which won the national title in 2022. Proud squad from West Virginia. They also implement a similar high pressure defensive style. And there you look at what they've done. 29 force tonight. Again, over a thousand this year. And if they get one more, it'll be the 14th time this year they've and they just got one. 14th time this year they've gotten 30 or more turnovers in a game. Underneath, Herzig knocked out. Hines collecting herself. Emily TC in this group. And they had to find a way through in the first couple of rounds, battling back, trailing in the fourth quarter in both games, in the quarters in the semis. The party's on in Mankato <laughs> and in Missouri. From the onset, right? Everybody's diving in, thinking something's going to happen to transpire with four seconds on the shot clock and the kick out, the dagger, the call timeout. Emily TC, we ask her about kind of keys to this game. Yep. And I say, are you just going to do what you do? And she just kind of shrugged her shoulders and say, yeah, that's what we do. And when you can bring something that you know is going to deliver most nights consistent numbers like this, again, and just giving you extra opportunities, it is a fun way to play when you get all the results. Another bucket on the inside for TWU, and what a run it's been for the Pioneers this year. They get still no quit in this group. And now the final seconds coming down. And for Minnesota State, you watch them play, and it certainly is a maverick way to play defense, but it's led to Minnesota State magic. The Mavericks. 2024 National Champs.